Hi, welcome to the Center for Integrative Nutrition's Teaching Kitchen. My name is Joya Pursuti, and I'm a research assistant here for the Department of Preventive and Behavioral Medicine. One of the classes I teach is a special cooking class for those with gastrointestinal issues, such as IBD, which also includes Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Today, I have a wonderful guest participating in my teaching kitchen with me, and we're going to make a few favorite recipes that we have here. Both include pear crisp and some special pizza. And what makes these two recipes very special is they're not cooked with traditional flours. They're in fact cooked with almond flour, which is a nut flour obviously, because on this diet we have a grain-free, starch-free, sugar-free, and lactose-free uh, staple here. So we use the almond flour to substitute for the traditional flours and hopefully you'll have some fun and enjoy watching us cook these foods for you. Okay, well let's get started. First we're gonna start with the pear crisp because that takes a little bit longer to cook. And so what we wanna do is peel and core and then slice these pears. And I've already done some of that here and what we'll do is finish this off right here. Okay, now after we've cut, peeled, cored the pears, and thinly sliced them rather, we want to make the filling for our pear crisp. So the first step is a half a cup of apple juice. So I'm gonna pour half a cup of unsweetened apple juice. It's very important that you have no sugar, no added sugar as there's no sugar on the diet, but naturally occurring sugars such as those in fruit and unsweetened fruit juice are allowed. So that's why I have my unsweetened apple juice here. And what about fake sugar? Is that allowed on this diet? No, fake sugar, it's such as high fructose corn syrup, that's also not allowed. Or Splenda? No, we're not gonna have Splenda on the diet, but you can have stevia or another form of that, which would be Truvia, and honey. So naturally occurring sugar such as honey, maple syrup, and the like can be included on the diet, but not, not refined sugar, table sugar, cane sugar, high fructose corn syrup. And agave sugar is actually a little bit too sweet for this diet too, it's too much sugar. So you want to stick with honey, maple syrup, and truvia, stevia, as natural sweeteners. Okay. And so if you could squeeze a lemon, we're going to squeeze a lemon because this requires one tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Okay, let's see if that's enough. Okay, I'm gonna grab. Perfect. Thank you. And we'll just discard that. And so next, we're going to put the arrowroot powder in. So we want a tablespoon of arrowroot powder. Arrowroot powder is actually a starch, and it's a gluten-free starch. And most people with gluten intolerances, such as celiac disease, they can they can have this. Hmm. But on and also this is such an, in such a small quantity um, on the diet that we include this to help it rise, mm -hmm. to help the um, the almond flour rise. And so we're going to include just a small amount, a tablespoon. So I'm going to go ahead and put one tablespoon of arrowroot powder into this liquid mixture. And along with that, we're going to put, why don't you put one teaspoon of nutmeg in. Okay, now we're going to mix this up with the, uh, we're going to whisk this together. And this is a mixture, after you finished whisking it, that's going to go over the apples. Good job. Thank you so much for blending it. We're going to pour it over the, uh, the pears. And I'm just going to lightly toss the mixture around. If you could hand me that spoon right there, that would be great. Thanks. Just to coat the pears evenly. 
And then our next step, good job, is we're going to put it in an 8 by 8 square baking dish. But before I do that, I'm just going to turn the oven on and preheat it to 350. Okay. The recipe, which will be available on the show, um, I'm sure, is calls for our baking time of 45 minutes, but sometimes you could do that in less, in approximately 30, depending upon the pairs and the cook time. If your oven is gas or electric, how thinly you slice the pears, and again, how ripe they are. Okay. So if you'd like to go ahead and pour that in the bowl. Now, of course, is the almond flour. So we're going to take the almond flour, this is this way, and basically this is blanched ground almonds. Blanch is the key. And we're going to add some grapeseed oil, honey, and sea salt, and that will be our mixture. So, okay, so is that almond flour with another kind of flour mixed in? It looks like there's a combination of something going on there. Actually, this is just pure ground blanched almonds. Okay. Just pure almonds. And also permissible on the diet is, the oat, is an oat flour. Okay. And you can do equal parts oat flour and almond flour. For instance, you could do one cup oat flour, one cup almond flour. Okay. But in this recipe here, we're just using almond flour, which is also fine. So I have two cups of almond flour in here. Okay. And I've poured the grapeseed, I actually noticed you poured the grapeseed oil in, and that is actually an interesting oil choice. It makes it sweeter. So it's a fat that will make it taste slightly sweeter. And the honey will also add to that. I've just finished putting a quarter cup of honey in. And now we want, now we want to put a tablespoon, I believe, of vanilla extract into this mixture. Do you want to use this one or a clean one? That yeah, one is a clean one. one for you. Well, I believe we have everything in there. Oh no, we need to put some cinnamon and nutmeg. And sea salt? Yes. Let's grab some sea salt. Okay. Here's sea salt. So I'm going to put the sea salt. Does it have to be sea salt? It doesn't, but sometimes it just depends on your taste as well. And this recipe calls for sea salt. So. What, I do, what I'm doing here, why we have two bowls and didn't just dump everything in mm. one bowl, is it's best to mix your liquid ingredients first and then your dry ingredients. Okay. And then once you have your dry ingredients and, and your wet ingredients both mixed, you can then combine them. Okay. So that's why we have a small bowl here. With we're going to mix them up in there and then right. we'll dump it in. Right. So okay. you can go ahead and whisk this together now. Okay. So now that we've added the cinnamon, nutmeg, sea salt to the almond flour, that completes our dry mixture. And I'm just going to make sure this is mixed well together. And next, I'm going to ask that you pour the wet ingredients in here. Kind of looks like caramel. It does. From the honey, the vanilla. It's got a nice richness to it. Okay, so once you've combined your liquid and dry ingredients, this is the texture for the top of the pear crisp that you want to have. It's a little bit wet and crumbly, and that's perfect. So this is what it looks like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and place it on top of these sliced pears and just sort of crumble it across like that. If you would be so kind as to help me. Mm -hmm. You know, this smells so good, I feel like I could kind of eat it raw. Is that something that's allowed on this diet or? Well that's a, also another excellent point. You can, and it depends on people's stage and progression of the disease and the extent that they've been on the diet. Uh, it's best to peel the fruits because of the intact fiber which can be difficult mm -hmm. for some to digest, especially right. if they have strictures or inflammation and just helps pass through easier. And um, But you can also have it cooked and sometimes that's easier for people in the beginning stages of the diet, it's easier for them to break mm -hmm. it down because it's softer okay. and that there's less intact fiber. Okay. So now 
I think we've covered that pretty well. It looks like a delicious pear looks crisp. delicious. It's great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it with aluminum foil. And we're going to bake it for 45 minutes. But I'm going to check it after 30 because it might be done then. Have you ever found that almond flour sort of cooks differently than um, any other flour? It does. Wheat flours? It does. That's a right. great point also. Almond flour, because it's made of nuts, doesn't cook traditionally like a white or even a wheat flour. Okay. It doesn't have any starch to really make it rise. That's why we put a small amount of the arrowroot powder in it. And it will cook up quicker and it won't rise as I said, but it will have, you'll know when it's cooked when it has a slight golden brown around the edges. The, um, okay, so the pears are sort of, they start to kind of crisp a little bit, or is it the crisp that looks golden brown? Well, the crisp on, what happens is this will, this will actually crisp up. Okay. And you can tell, but it does cook up sometimes faster than a traditional flour. Mm -hmm. So you do have to monitor it depending okay. upon what kind of um, stove you're cooking with, gas or electric. And uh, you can sort of play around with it. You know, it might be five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but you want to watch for it because it does cook up quicker. Okay. Okay, so now that that's put in the oven, we are going to let that bake for about 30 minutes. Okay. And we're going to move on to making the special pizza and the special tomato sauce that accompanies it. So I also want to make mention, because there's no preservatives in what we're baking, is that after you let it cool, you want to refrigerate it and eat it within a couple of days. So like two, two days, two, two three, three days? Two, three days, okay. yeah. All right, and is there a, I mean, does it spoil the same way? Would I, how would I know if it had been sort of Well, actually, gone? it's interesting. You'll notice the taste over a course of, of the week okay. decline, so you okay. won't be able to taste the spices as well and you could also freeze it no problem so after you bake it if you wanted to bake two fair crisps and save one for you know next weekend you can just freeze it immediately after you finish baking it and then microwave it mm -hmm. to warm it up okay. in the oven again okay yeah. okay this is great this came out beautiful mm -hmm. this is a pear crisp it's finished baking in about 30 minutes you can see all the juices have come to the top and the almond flour has crisped nicely. Mm -hmm. This is an excellent dessert for both anyone who would like a healthier option with more protein, as this has a lot of protein yeah. because it is almond flour. People on a diet or people just looking to eat healthier are an alternate version to white or wheat flour. Okay. And again, this has almond flour, honey, cinnamon, nutmeg, fresh lemon, freshly squeezed lemon juice, a little bit of arrowroot powder, sea salt, grapeseed oil, and no sugar added apple juice. Okay. Of course, pear. It smells well. great. So, let's test it out. It's probably gonna be a little hot. We just pull this right out of the oven. So you might wanna take a little bite or blow on it. But it smells mm. delicious. It smells mm. like nothing I've smelled before, actually. It's, it's got a very unique smell. It's very fresh, no preservatives. Mmm. Mmm. Good, mm. glad you like it. Mmm. So this is a great dessert, healthy dessert option on the diet. The topping is just delicious. The almond flour really goes nicely with the honey. Mm. And again, this recipe is brought to you by the Department of Preventive and Behavioral Medicine in its Center for Integrative Nutrition. My name is Joya Pursuti, and I'm a research assistant here for the department. And I've been working on these recipes for over a year now. So thank you so much for coming in. Oh, my pleasure. get nut flowers, particularly almond flour? Well, nut flowers are also, again, sold at specialty stores um, and in, in, in natural food stores as well. But for the best price, it is slightly expensive. You could purchase it online and buy it in bulk from mm. a few online retailers, okay. which we can also have those resources listed available to you as well. Okay, great. Mm -hmm.
Now, is there anything I need to know about how to store almond flour? It sounds like if you buy it in bulk, where would you store it? That's a great question. Almond flour can either be refrigerated if you're using it in the short ter term, and if you want it longer term, I would advise to freeze it. If you freeze really? almond flour, yes, if you freeze almond flour, it will be good for about six months to one year. And so that will help you buy in bulk and save money in the long term. Why does it require refrigeration? Because it's a nut flour and there's no preservatives in it. Okay. So it's a nut, and most nuts are generally um, best when refrigerated. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. I have one more question. Does almond flour, do almond flour um, products or does almond flour in general have a very strong almond flavor? Is it like eating a handful of nuts or? Actually it's not, uh, especially when you add uh, spices or honey and whatnot. It's, it's very bland okay. and it tends to take on the flavor of whatever you Tomatic. use, whatever okay. spice or flavor you use. Good, I can't wait to try that. Great. Now what about Fake sugar, is that allowed on this diet? No, fake sugar, such as high fructose corn syrup, that's also not allowed. Or Splenda? No, we're not going to have Splenda on the diet, but you can have Stevia or another form of that, which would be Truvia, and honey. So naturally occurring sugar, such as honey, maple syrup, and the like, can be included on the diet, but not, not refined sugar, table sugar, cane sugar, high fructose corn syrup. And agave sugar is actually a little bit too sweet for this diet too, it's too much sugar. So you want to stick with honey, maple syrup, and truvia, stevia, as natural sweeteners. Okay. Where would you get arrowroot powder? You can get this at your local natural food store. Okay. Also, um, some specialty stores carry it as well. Um, and you can also special order it and online. There's various resources available online. Have to be sea salt? Can it be table salt? It, What's the difference? It can be. It can be. This is slightly coarser. Okay. So it's table salt is finer. 